2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 11. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. So, dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things, and you will never fall away. Do these things, and you will never fall away then God will give you a grand entrance into the kingdom of the eternal of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I guess I didn't have those up there, did I? Well, I apologize for that. Psalm 105, verse 17 through 19. I hope I got that up there. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons until the time that his word came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. I want to talk to you today about doing time. And this is what patient endurance is about today, is doing time. It is, it, it is a unique addition as the apostle here is asking us to add to our faith all of these things. And we spoke to you in the past few weeks about Moral excellence, adding to knowledge, and knowledge with self-control. And we spoke to you last week about gaining control of your emotions, gaining control of your life by living uh, under submission to the power of the Holy Spirit. It, it, it's making choices that, that guide and direct your life. Self-control is limiting yourself. It is putting measures on yourself. Uh, you know, Paul said last week, he said there were many things or, or th there were people in his day that said, I can do anything I want to. And he was saying, you may can do or have freedom to do anything you want to, but not everything is good for you. And so he was showing forth what self-control was. But today is patient endurance. And while patient endurance is connected somewhat to self-control, it is is somewhat different. And we will see this in Joseph's life in the message today. So we need and you need and I need to add to our faith. Somebody say amen. Add to it. Now, how many of you know that not adding to your life, to your spiritual life, is looked upon as a negative thing in the Word of God? It's negative. Imagine having and you can because you have. But imagine having the God of the universe take up residence inside your soul and you don't increase. Now imagine that. You invited God, the, the one who created this building, who created all the materials that you see, who created the worlds and the worlds that you do not see. He takes up living residence inside your body because you ask him to come in as your Lord and your Savior and then we say to ourselves, we don't increase. You must increase with God inside your soul. Amen? And this is why he's saying that we must continue to add to our life, especially with patient endurance. And many of you here today may be struggling to be patient in your current circumstances. It may not be ideal of what you want to see happen in your life, but he says when you add patient endurance... It helps you to last out the trials and the things that comes your life, your way. Sometimes it seems like we spend so much time in our lives waiting on someone else to get their life together or for our circumstances to change. And many times it's God that we're waiting on. 
God has not brought us to that time. You remember when Jesus came, the Bible says when due season came, he brought forth his son who was our Savior. They were waiting on God. And many of you here today are waiting on God for answers. For situations that you have not seen resolved yet and to do that and to do it effectively and to do it in a way that you have the victory you have to add patient endurance to your life that means holding up under the pressure of this world and everything else that will come at you believing and knowing that your God will come through for you patient endurance in life Many times in scriptures, we are reminded to wait upon the Lord. In Psalm 27 and 14, he says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. How many of you just love waiting rooms? I mean, you just love waiting. You just can't wait tomorrow. Some of you love waiting so good, you think you'll just go over to the Department of Driver Services just to see how wonderful it is to wait, amen, that you can go to the doctor's office when they give you a 10 o'clock appointment and you don't get to see him till 11, but you're just enjoying the wait, amen. I don't think I see anybody nodding yes on that. Waiting is hard and difficult. To see things mature, to see things come into being, to see them shape up the way they need to. That is a difficult thing. When you're praying for a family member that is lost and is going down a horrible trail and you see them bringing destruction to themselves and yet you wait to see God's hand move in their life, that patient endurance will keep you in times of trouble because it's, it's of God. In, 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 and he will strengthen your life for that. We are, we are always, we're always identifying waiting with being stuck. That's the problem. We say, I'm stuck. I can't get here and I can't get there. If you've ever been stuck in a car, you've been stuck in a ditch, or you've been stuck in the mud and there was nobody else around to help, that is a horrible feeling when you can't get out and go anywhere. But we, we seem to identify waiting with being stuck. And no one likes to be in that type of a situation. Some people here today will ask quietly, but yet it's, it's being asked out loud, loud in your soul. What good could come out of me being stuck in the current circumstance that I'm in? What, what possibly could the good be that I'm going to get out of this? Well, let's back up one verse. In 27, 14, we said, wait on the Lord. Let's back up to verse 13 and hear what the psalmist said. He said, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then he goes on in that verse 14 and says, wait on the Lord. I'm going to tell you, 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 you feel like fainting sometimes. You feel like that you can't keep up and can't keep bearing up under this load. But the psalmist says, I knew that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He will turn this thing around for you in time as long as you will add patient endurance to your life and not give up before God comes to give you you what you need amen and so many times we do that in frustration in doubt we give up and we walk away right at the time when God was ready to move so first of all why don't we explore then here today why it is that God wants us to have patient endurance I believe the answer in scripture to that question is obvious in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, it reminds us that God, first of all, is patient with us. In 2 Peter 3 and 9, he says, The Lord isn't really slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. So you see, God is patient. Some of you, you'll say, even so, come, Lord Jesus. How many of you would like for the Lord to have the rapture take place today? Really? Only half of you? How many of you like to see the rapture happen today? Praise God. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing that we could see God do for us today? 
But why is it that he don't come sometimes? Because he's being patient. Because he doesn't want your sons and your daughters and your grandchildren and your neighbors and somebody else to die and go to hell or to have the rapture to take place because he's being patient. But I got news for you. One day his patience will end. But we've never seen, like in America, the long-suffering patience of God in a midst of people who turn around and poke their finger in his eye and do everything that we can do to despise the word of God and yet he has remained patient and if God can remain patient with us we should remain patient with God when he is maturing us and when he is causing us to grow and to flourish as he begins to, to mature us in the kingdom of God we must also be patient with him amen you and I need patient endurance so Patient endure, perseverance or patient endurance is the ability to practice self-control over time. You see, patient endurance is about time. Self-control, as we talked to you last week, is about you deciding how you're going to control your life and what you're going to allow in your life and the things that, that you don't do because you, you know, you don't want to do it because you want to further the kingdom of God. You don't want to tear anything down. Patient endurance is about enduring the time cycle, about going through the longevity of what it takes to get through time, time in life. Every situation in life cannot be a sprint. Many times your spiritual situations are going to turn into a marathon. And I'm, how many of you know that you don't run a marathon with a sprint mentality? If you do, you'll give up real quick and vice versa. A sprint requires a whole different attitude about what you're going to do versus a marathon. When you start out to run a marathon, does anybody here run a marathon, by the way? Anybody? Anybody? Anybody wished you'd run a marathon? Yeah, a few people, yeah. But when you run, my brother I know is completing a couple of them, and, and, and he's talked to me about his training and how you had to slowly build up and you had to get yourself into a mindset that you don't just take off from the starting line and just say, boy, it's like a sprint. I'm going after this thing. And what is it, 26 miles? Is that what it is? 26 miles later, you'll be dead in five miles if you take that kind of attitude. You've got to pace yourself and, 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 and to watch your hydration as you're going along uh, that course to be able to make it. You've got to evaluate where the uphills are going to be and the downhills are going to be. And, and you, you've got to determine what the weather's going to be on, on how it's going to tax your life. It's a whole different mentality. And when we face spiritual situations that or a marathon, we need patient endurance in our life. So much. It's been noted that when spiritual marathons come our way or serious trials, that's when we're most susceptible to Satan's temptations to doubt God's love and care for us. Because sometimes when we get into this time trial and things are not moving and things are not shaking, the way that we want to. This is where the devil will tempt you to charge God with not caring about your situation or caring about your life because he hasn't answered your prayer yet. Any of you been there? Amen. I think we've all been there in life. In Psalm 73, Asaph found himself in this same situation when he began to compare the people of the world's success to his current grind. In Psalm 73, 11 through 14, he says, Look at these wicked people enjoying a life of ease while their riches multiply. Did I keep my heart pure for nothing? Did I keep myself innocent for no reason? Here's what he says. I get nothing but trouble all day long. Every morning brings me pain. He was saying to us, look at them people. They don't even use self-control. They don't even restrain themselves. They don't even care to try to honor a God. And the more they get wicked and wicked, the more prosperous they get. And he said, I'm over here trying to do the best I can to work self-control, patient endurance, to add all these things to my faith, and I get more behind every day. And yet... You know the story of Asaph in Psalm 73. He said, it wasn't until I went to the house of the Lord 
And I got in prayer that he said, I saw what their end would be. I'm going to tell you, folks, we're going through some of the toughest times I think America has ever seen. We're going through some of the most dark and evil times our nation has ever seen. We're seeing, I, I went to a, um, a vision a meeting this week from our section in, in the Athens section, and our, our new superintendent says we've already closed six churches in five months already, and we're looking at closing more. And I'm telling you that other people and denominations throughout this land today, churches are closing, churches are waning as never before because people do not have the patient endurance to see all the way through what God wants to do. I'm going to tell you to bring and to restore this nation if it's even possible to be done. It will take people that have a marathon attitude in their life to say, we will take a victory here, we'll take a victory there, but we must not give up and try to run a sprint and then get discouraged because things don't happen because it's not within our time frame. We've got to know that God is not out of control. He's watching over this situation. Amen? So, what can we do to make our spiritual journey more tolerable? Seeing we need patient endurance to have strong faith. Look for a moment at verse 10 and 11. And I think I have that here now in our text. 2 Peter 1, 9 through 11. So dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you are really among those God has called and chosen. Do these things. In other words, add to your faith and you will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He's saying these things must be added and complemented to your faith so that you do not get discouraged and fall away. The things that you're going to see in the coming days and weeks and months are literally Hear what I'm telling you. They will have a tendency to knock the spiritual wind out of your life. If you believe that we're in the last days, you have not seen anything yet that will attempt to rock your faith. You, you may as well understand that these are evil, corrupt times, and the enemy will not give up the territory that he has held easily and without working destruction that we have never seen in our very lives. Amen? But if you add to your faith and if you become strong, it will work in your life that you will never fall away. Philippians 1 and 6 says this, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Do you see that patient endurance is all about the Christian finishing your course? God has a course laid out for every one of you. And he said that he will work in your life to complete what he started up until the day of Christ. But you in your life must get an attitude of finishing what has been started. Jesus is a finisher with increase. Not only will you finish, but you will increase at the end of your trials and your tribulations. You will have more strength, more power, more clarity, more knowledge, more than you've ever had when you buckle in to finish your course. Amen? It's so important that we understand this. Looking at the life of Joseph for a moment, you know the story of how that he was tried to no end. Here was a young boy who had dreams of what God was showing him, of what his future was going to be. We see some arrogance in him as he kind of kept that presented in front of his brothers that got them jealous and upset. But we see a plot against him that should have never have happened, that his brothers sold him, or they were going to kill him to start with. And then one of the brothers, I believe Reuben, spoke up and, and spared his life. But he was sold into slavery. As he was sold into slavery, he goes into the house of Potiphar, who he works in such a diligent and a wonderful way that he increases the house of Potiphar. It is more blessed than it's ever been. And then you know the story of Potiphar's wife, who tried to get him to have a relationship with her, and he would not do it. 
And she claimed, of course, through the story that she was raped by him. And he goes off to prison to where he spends the next approximately 13 to 15 years in prison. Now, you know that if you go into prison and you've been lied on and you've been sold by your brothers down the shoe, by this time I'd have done been a backslider. Amen? Not you. Some of y'all looking at me real stoic like, no, sir, I could handle that just fine. When you're in prison and you've been accused falsely, and every day you get up and know you're behind bars, you're doing time for something that you didn't do. That, in my opinion, friends, would take a patient endurance like I have never seen in my life. Patient endurance. You see, the scriptures tell us here where Joseph is concerned that patient, number one, patient endurance caused Joseph to accept his current circumstances while being aware that his current situation would not last forever. I've come to tell you today that what you're going through won't last forever. I'm telling you that whatever phase, whatever period of life that you're going through, whatever thing it is that seems to try to torment you, that tries to bring fear upon you, that thing is not going to last forever. And Joseph's wasn't going to last forever. And I believe in his heart that he knew it because of the word that God had gave him as a young boy. Those dreams and those revelations were what was keeping him alive. And I got news for you. What God has put into your soul, he spoke to you, he's revealed to you. You keep them before you because they will keep you up when the world tries to pull you down. Amen? They will keep you going when they try to exhaust everything that's within you. And Joseph knew that he could accept his circumstance. Now that's so hard for us in life to think about. I'm not going to accept this, Pastor. I'm not going to accept. Sometimes accepting what's before you is the fastest and the easiest way to overcome it. Well, you say, well, if I accept it, then I'm just giving in. No, that wasn't what Joseph was doing. He was accepting the situation that he was in. There's an old saying that says, you can curse the darkness or you can light a candle. One or the other. You can curse the darkness or light a candle. Which one do you want to do? And sometimes when you look at your circumstance and you say, okay, Rather than me getting up fighting this and whining and complaining and being upset and tore up all the time, just say, okay, Lord, this is how it is for now. Just for now. You know, to accept what I'm facing. God does not always promise to immediately get you out of your current situation. But he does promise to be immediately on the scene of your circumstance and to walk every step with you to the end of it. You will never be without God in your circumstance if you know him in your life. Amen? You see, our current circumstances were not designed to last forever, but they were designated to get you to the next level of spiritual growth in your life. They won't last, but they'll do something for you in the process that could never be done without that particular circumstance. Joseph didn't wind up in jail by accident. God knew where he was going, and God was using those circumstances to mature him and to make him to be the leader that he was needing to be when he stepped in the presence of Pharaoh to lead a whole nation, the second in command. And I don't know what God's doing in your life, but it won't last forever. But it is designated to bring you to a place of victory and power that your life will shine and witness for God above everything. Who I feel the anointing of God speaking to somebody right now. Hallelujah. If Joseph's present circumstances made him a slave, which they did, then while a slave, he would be the best slave he could be till things changed. Y'all getting it? If Joseph's present circumstances made him a prisoner, then while he was a prisoner, he would find a way to run the prison in such a manner that would set the standard for everyone else who followed him, and he ran the prison in that way. You see, if he'd been over while licking his wounds and moaning and groaning and not accepting what was going on, he couldn't have run something that would have gave God the glory. Amen. 
If his present situation or circumstances made him Lord over all, but one being Pharaoh himself, then as a Lord, he would rule as one who had been ruled himself. He would have compassion and he would have mercy because of the certain circumstance that he went through. And I'm telling you that whatever circumstance you find yourself in today, be the best that you can be. Add patient endurance and God will cause his anointing to shine on you even through your troubles and trials. Amen? Philippians chapter 4, 11 through 13. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every circum situation, whether it's with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Amen? You can. And patient endurance will help you with that. Somebody needs this here today. Somebody watching this today live needs to hear what is being said here today. Secondly, adding patient endurance to Joseph's faith caused him to value hard work that showcased his abilities to advance his status while being in a less than desirable position. I want you to hear this. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10, the first part of it says, whatsoever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Patient endurance will showcase your abilities to advance your status even if you're in a less than desirable position. You see, trials are often fought and won and our time more well spent and profitable when our attitude towards our situation is more positive than it is negative. If you have a rotten attitude, I get one every once in a while. How about anybody out there? Okay, praise God. John's the only one in here that's true with me today. I said, does anybody out there ever get a rotten attitude? Praise God. Some of you probably came here with a rotten attitude today but something happened. Don't give me this. I know what you go through in life, amen, or at least in part. But you see, in, in, in our life, you see, their trials are often fought and won in our time more well spent when we have a positive attitude. And patient endurance will give that to you. Colossians 3 and 23 says, Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than people. Do you know that when you shift your attention to your Lord and you see yourself as working for him instead of Potiphar, instead of for the prison, that things will begin to change in your life? It will begin to change your attitude. This is a game changer when adding patient endurance uh, to your life because if you and I shift our attention away from man towards God, then that makes much life much better because you know in your heart if I say God is good and you say all the time and all the time God is good. You're working for a good God. Potiphar's wife I don't think was too good to work for. Potiphar may have been okay to work for. The prison managers, they weren't too good to work for either. I'm sure they were hard on their days. But when he saw I'm working for God, Everything I'm doing is for the master. And if you take that attitude away from here today, it'll change your walk of patient endurance through your trials. It can't help but change them. Thirdly, patient endurance kept Joseph in agreement with God's word to him through his prophetic dreams, which kept him focused on the word that would build him up and not the anger of his flesh for what had been done to him. And I want you to see this where patient endurance. He was in agreement with God's word. He never lost the vision of those dreams. He never lost the fact. I mean, he, he, his mindset changed about it in a way. I was knowing his brothers, even his fathers one day would bow down to him. You know the stories of the dreams that he had. He never lost that. He believed all the way through that God would keep his word to him. You see, his brothers, Potiphar's wife, the prison, the butler, and the baker 
had taken a lot away from Joseph. But one thing that he would not relinquish and let them steal from him was his prophetic dreams. You could name all people and say this one, that one, this one, that one has done this, they've done that, they've done this. But here's what's not going to happen. They're not stealing my joy. They're not stealing the word. They're not stealing my faith. They're not stealing what I believe to be the one good God who is going to help me in my life. Amen? Now, we know that Joseph was focused on God and his word and not his anger. Because in Genesis 40, when he saw Pharaoh's butler and baker in prison, and they were sad because they had both had a dream and did not know what it meant. Joseph could have shot back at them angrily at that time when he encountered them and heard their dreams and said, just forget your dreams. Because I had some in my life, and I come in here, just look where it's gotten me. That could have been his attitude. Just shut up with your dreams. You know, those dreams, you know, that's this fanciful thinking. You're in prison, just accept you're in prison and go on. He could have had that attitude of anger in life. Instead, Joseph, falsely accused, not being where he should have been, took time to call on God on their behalf and help them to understand their dreams and advance the cause of the chief butler while his own situation was going to remain unchanged. Now that takes patient endurance to know that you help somebody else in your situation of need. Actually, he got him out of jail by helping him out to interpret his dream through what God revealed to him. He advanced somebody else. And if he would have been embroiled in anger, if he'd have been embroiled in hate, if he'd have been embroiled in unforgiveness, he could have never advanced that man's status. You and I need to know that when you allow these things to encumber your feet, to encumber your mind, to, I'm talking about bitterness and anger, how many people are going unministered to because you're wrapped up in something that God never intended you to be wrapped up in and he, all he wanted you to do was to add patient endurance to your life that you would be able to hold up under that and have a good attitude. It's a, it's a lesson in great maturity. We must add patient endurance to our faith so that when you find yourself in a situation... How many of you remember the four lepers in 1 Kings chapter 7? Samaria was being besieged and there was a famine and people were, were, were unfortunately, they were eating each other's children. They were, they were eating doves' dung. And these four lepers were on the outside of the city. And all they got was scraps every day probably thrown out to them to eat. But if you remember the story, they decided one day to get up and go over to the enemy and said, well, if they kill us, we're going to die anyhow. But if they let us live, at least they'll give us a meal. And when they got there, they found the enemy had scattered. The soup beans and the cornbread were still on the fire in the middle of the camp. The ham and the bacon were still in process of being cooked. And they just strolled on in there and got what they wanted. And they're thinking to themselves, all of a sudden they're enjoying, they're going there trying on garments and trying on fancy clothes. And all of a sudden they stopped. And they remembered their situation. And they remembered what they had been walking through. And instead of being angry at the people back in the city and being upset because they had been so vilely treated, what did they do? They said, we can't do this. We've got, this is a day of good news. We've got to go back and invite them to come and to feast where we're feasting today. That's what patient endurance will do for you. It will help you that when your circumstance is not everything that it should be, that you can entertain a spirit of joy and power and invite others into your circle and lead them to know Jesus in a greater way. Amen. That's what he's saying unto us in our life. You see, if you don't add patient endurance to your faith, it becomes very easy for the ones who have been abused to become abusers instead of blessers. And I got news for you. Don't become an abuser because someone else has abused you. Learn through patient endurance how to become a blesser. Amen? Is this good? You see, this is what Peter and, Peter and John, they weren't rich folks. They didn't have anything, actually. They wound up in prison the majority of the time 
And they went up one day to the temple to pray, and there was a lame man laying at the gate called Beautiful. And the man stopped them and wanted alms. And Peter, he said, we ain't got nothing, you know. But he wasn't upset or sad about it. But he looked at that man and he says, look on this. He said, silver and gold I do not have. But such as I have, I give unto you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. You may not have all the fancy things of the world, but you got something inside of your soul. And don't let anger over what you don't have keep you from giving people what you do have, is the power of the Holy Ghost to change their lives. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to preach here in a moment. I'm just getting started. Hallelujah. God wants us to have patient endurance. Next, patient endurance will empower you to reject the world's advancement against your dreams, even if it means having to accept further delays with your transition in order to protect your integrity. Potiphar's wife was a tool of Satan to get him to give up his dream, to get him to give up on the Word of God, to get him to abort what God had for him by enticing him through the lust of the flesh into a relationship that was not right. And we see here that patient endurance gives you the ability to reject the world's advancement. You see, what she was trying to do was get him in her corner and give him her little power thing. You know, she would have made him whatever she would have made him in her day and time, but she would advance to him. He, he probably wouldn't have been the regular uh, slave that he was, but he was not going to accept it. And if Joseph would have went along with Potiphar's wife's scheme, he probably wouldn't have even gone to prison. And no, he wasn't. He'd still be in her house. If he'd have just said, okay, Lord, you know, I, that's my dream. I'm not giving up on that, you know, but, but I really hate this situation I'm in. I see an opportunity right here, right now, that if I take up part of for his wife on this situation, things are going to get a whole lot better for me. And I'm telling you, oftentimes those trials and those temptations, they come our way. He wouldn't have gone to prison. He'd have had his basic needs met. He would have obtained a little more power than he had before. But he would have still been a slave to something that he was never designed to be permanently attached to. And even though it would have temporarily shortened the duration of his trial, it would have extended his pain and agony. And I got news for you. Add patient endurance and don't allow the world to ex to deliver a solution to you that is worldly in nature to get you to come off of what you believe so that you can temporarily advance yourself for a short season because it will not last amen and this is what he's saying sarah she done the same thing in the word of god god come along and told abraham and sarah i'm going to give you a child and it didn't happen until Abraham was, I think, around 100, and she was 90-something, I guess. But 10 years after that prophecy had gone forth, Sarah said, this ain't working. We're getting older and older. Ain't no way we're going to have a baby in life. And so she comes along in Genesis Chapter 16 and verse 3, so Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abraham as wife. This happened 10 years after they'd settled the land of Canaan. What happened? There was nothing but trouble out of Ishmael being born. Immediately when Hagar got pregnant, she despised Sarah. Because now she was queen of that outfit now. She was pregnant and Sarai wasn't. There was trouble in the house. And any time that you take the world solution to opt out on what God told you to do, you are going to have trouble in your life. You may as well just go ahead and say, I can endure this. Hallelujah. If God said it, and it did happen, we know that he brought forth Isaac, the promised child that was to come. But the world will try to pull you off on your circumstance to do that. Fifthly, patient endurance specializes in destroying arrogance so that God's gifting within us can be accredited to the correct source. You see, when Joseph finally got out of prison, 
he was a little snotty-nosed, ratty boy running around telling that dream, I don't know, maybe to aggravate his brothers. I don't know whether he was or not. But he had a little bit of arrogance about him. He had a little bit and needed to be chiseled off and rubbed off in life. And that's patient endurance has done it now. Because when he got before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh was told that he had the power to interpret dreams because the baker or the butler had said, this is what he did. Now hear what he's got to do. And here's what Joseph said in Genesis 41, verses 15 and 16, when he got before Pharaoh. He said, it is beyond my power to do this, Joseph replied to Pharaoh. But God can tell you what it means and set you at ease. He didn't look to himself. He didn't look to any accomplishment he had done. His patient endurance had destroyed his arrogance that he could accredit what needed to be accredited to God. He said, God is the answer of these dreams. And that's what we need in our life to destroy that arrogance in our life from day to day. In Joseph's early days with his brothers, that needed to be corrected. And so God did. Sixthly, patient endurance when allowed to do its work will anoint you to aid others on their journey while you are en route to your destination. We see that, and, and, and we talked about this briefly a few moments ago, but in Genesis 40 and 11 through 13, Joseph's told the man, the cupbearer, he said, this is what the dream means, Joseph said. The three branches represents three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift you up and restore you to your position as his cu chief cupbearer. And so we see here that patient endurance brought an anointing to Joseph to aid others on their journey, even though he was in trouble himself. And I tell you, God wants to anoint you today and give you a special anointing. And when you go out there, it, that you're not focused on so much of what's going on with you as you are what's going on through you. And that is the power of God. Rahab, the harlot. When the spies came in to her house to be hidden from the people of Jericho as they were spying out the land, she got a word from them that she could be free eventually. But what did she do when the soldiers came knocking on her door? She aided them and helped them to get away while she remained a prisoner and even knowing, mm, this might not work out. But she helped someone else out. Naaman, you remember Naaman, the one that went to the prophet and had to dip seven times in the old dirty Jordan until he could get free from his leprosy? How did he do that? He had gone into the land. Naaman was, was, was the Syrian chief uh, of an army. And, and he goes in to one of the Israel cities and takes captive people there. And he takes captive a little Jewish girl. And this little Jewish girl becomes Naaman's wife's servant. And one day... She spoke uh, in, in 2 Kings chapter 5, 1 through 3. Let's look at that. At this time, Armenian raiders had invaded the land of Israel, and among their captives was a young girl who had been given to Naaman's wife as a maid. One day the girl said to her mistress, I wish my master would go see the prophet in Samaria. He would heal him of his leprosy. So here was another young girl had every right to be bitter. She had been captured. She had been taken away from her family. She had been made to work as a slave in somebody else's house. And all she could think about was how to get somebody else healed and how to get somebody else well. Patient endurance will do that. Lastly, Brad and Christy, if y'all come. Patient endurance adjusted Joseph's outlook towards the bigger picture so that he could make amends with his family for what they had put him through. I love this story in Genesis to when Joseph is, I think he's kind of messing with them, but you know, he's, he's really trying to see if they've really humbled themselves down. He, he seats them in order. He does all these things that should have been clues to them, and eventually Joseph can't take it no more, and the scripture says he cries like a baby in the mist. And his brothers are so astonished because he reveals to them, you know, in Genesis 45, verses 4 and 5, please come closer, he said to them. So they came closer, and he said again, I'm Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery. 
But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place because it was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your life. Everything that Joseph did to have patient endurance here adjusted his attitude so that when he did face his brothers that had been so cruel and has been so evil towards him that he forgave them and he loved them and he blessed them as never before by being patient and having endurance in your life. Look, we must not only stand for ourselves in this last day, but we have got to be there, Brookstone Church, for each other if the battle for our church and our nation is going to be won. I'm telling you, we've got to be there for one another. And I want to close that with a story that I know you're familiar with in the Bible. In Exodus chapter 17, verses 11 through 13, And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy, so that they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side, and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Sometimes on our journey, our hands get heavy. Our patient endurance wears thin. We just don't feel like, Pastor, I just can't hold my hands up anymore. And when that happens, what's the body for? The body of Christ is here to position those who are going through terrible times a place to sit down and rest while we hold their hands up that the battle can prevail in the right way. And I'm telling you, God is calling every one of you here today to have eyes that are open, ears that can hear so that you can see and know who is in distress. Your handhold adventure may be prayer and intercession. It may be that God lays them on your heart and you say, Lord, I lift up their hands. I lift up their burden right now. I don't know what they're going through, but I feel something is happening. And I know they're having trouble with the patient endurance right now. And I ask you to help them to overcome in Jesus' name. It may be that you finally pick up that phone and you release the words that God has put in your spirit to share with them that you thought was kind of dumb or you, you kind of thought didn't make much sense. But when you turn those loose words and let them flow into the ears of the person God told you to speak them to, they were like refreshing rivers of water that came to their life. It was what they needed. Patient endurance did all of this through Joseph. So that he would not be sidelined, but he would remain on the field, in the battle, working for the kingdom of God. Our troubles, our trials are going to be strong. If we, God chooses to leave us here, remain here, we're going to face temptations and trials. We're going to see things and, and know things that we should have never saw or never known before. But God will help us to be the victor in all that we do. And whatever you're facing, whatever your situation is right now, I'm praying today that you don't lose hope, that you don't give up. It may be for your family. It may be for your friends. It may be even for your own personal journey that God is speaking and calling you into. But please, please don't give up. Add to your faith virtue. To virtue, knowledge. To knowledge, self-control. And self-control, patient endurance. If you do these things and they abound, they will make you that you will never fall away and that you will be strong. Would you bow your heads? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this people today. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to give them patient endurance. It's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would be preaching it and everybody would be talking about it. But God, sometimes we get short-fused. Sometimes in our weaknesses, we just want to throw up our hands and quit. Sometimes we rather curse the darkness than we had literally to light a candle because we're so frustrated. And I pray for someone right now that's in the heat of the battle, 
that's going through something right now that, that they need your peace and they need your strength to help them to endure, to bear up under it, to not let it cause them to give in and to cave in. Because the Lord said in his word that he would lift the load. He says, cast all your cares on me because I care for you. And God, I pray that you would lift that burden right now or that you would lift the spirit of the burden carrier right now and know that as they are yoked to you, this thing is not going to last forever, but the day of victory will come. It will come. And we thank you and we give you the praise for that here today. While your heads are still bowed, if you would say, Pastor Jeff, would you pray for me this week? I'm, I'm in the midst of something that is requiring that patient endurance. And I just need God to strengthen and establish my heart and my spirit that like a Joseph, I won't get angry and I won't get mad and, and, and I won't quit and I won't fly off the handle and do something I ought not to do and that God will help me to still be able to minister to others even while I need ministering to. Is someone here today say, pray for me this week, Pastor? Would you slip your hand up so I know? Amen. Thank you. Yes, I see that. Anyone else? Anyone else? Hallelujah. I need that. I need that in my life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for these hands that have gone up here today. I thank you because it doesn't matter how hot the fire gets, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The only thing that it will do is burn the things that bind us. will burn the things that try to control us. Because the fourth man will always be walking in that fire. Strengthen them, God. Enable them to have your peace. To see that they're working for you. And that one day they won't give an answer to their boss. They won't give an answer to anybody else in this world. But we will give an answer to Jesus. We will stand before him one day. And God help us to let this supplement this addition to our faith not go to waste but let us relish in the example of Joseph and live and live free and we ask it in Jesus name Amen